I thought I'd do something on a lighter note with all the breaking news concerning Tony Stewart and NASCAR today and last night. I just want to say good job, A.J. Allmendinger. Your comeback is complete. Most of you know the story. Two years ago, tested positive for a banned drug, which come to find out, he had only taken a friend's prescription while at 4th Street Live in Louisville in preparation for the Kentucky race. Apparently he had come in town a day or two early. It's only about an hour from the Kentucky Speedway. And I've, I've made my feelings clear that NASCAR's one-size-fits-all drug testing policy doesn't work. I never did believe A.J. Allmendinger had a drug problem. I have a vlog up about that. Not necessarily A.J. Allmendinger, but NASCAR's one-size-fits-all drug policy doesn't always work. Yes, there are times when you need the serious rehab. Now, I will place part of the blame on Almondinger for not fessing up when the tests come back positive. Hey, I took a prescription drug one time. It was stupid, but let's face it, we all do stupid stuff in our lives. I have, I'm sure other people have, you have, stuff you regret, but that's life. But I just want to say, today with the race at Watkins Glen, with all the storylines going on, A.J. Allmendinger driving for the one-car team, though with an alliance with Richard Childress Racing, be, who's probably the best road racer, at least at Watkins Glen right now, Marcus Ambrose. Good, tough race. Pit strategy and fuel mileage, as usual, played into it, but that's not uncommon. But, and what I was really impressed with, while they were getting ready to interview him in Victor Lane, remember this race ran long, two red flags. One was an hour and a half while they repair a guardrail. And I may do something on that a little bit later tonight. In fact, I've done two during the red flag and delete them, didn't post them. But, um... Both Roger Penske, who Almondinger drove for, and re was released from the 22 ride, the ride Logano has now, after the drug test fiasco, I'm going to call it, because it was fiasco on Almondinger and NASCAR's part, frankly. But both Roger Penske and Richard Childress, of course, well known, both have, Penske has two championships in NASCAR. One in the Nationwide with Keselowski, and one in Cup with Keselowski, and of course, several Indy wins. And I'll give, and I'm not a fan of Roger Penske. It goes way back to the 70s, actually. But came up to congratulate the Dinger in Victory Lane. And, but I will give Penske credit for giving A.J. Allmendinger a chance both in an Indy car and a Nationwide car last year. Which got him into the 47 car. Now, I'm not particularly thrilled with one of the 47's car's owners. That's one thing I won't miss about ESPN going away. Hopefully, Brad Doherty don't catch on with another network. He's, and this is not meant to be racist, but he's an ex-basketball player. How does that qualify him? Because he's part owner of a racing team to be an expert commentator. Frankly, owners of racing teams competing at that level should not be commentators, and yes, that includes Michael Waltrip. I, all I'm saying is just good job, Danger.